Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Mach-E vlog, but today isn't just about the Mach-E. We're going to take a look at a lot of cool EVs. So let's go. Okay, so we are here with a bunch of people. This is Bob. He's in the Colorado Mach-E club with us. And we're doing like meetups and stuff like that. Check your local area. And of course, as we always say, check mockee.org and it's actually mock-e.org. We'll pop that on the screen right, right now. now. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, he, he joined us today to, to check out this event. This is his uh, Rapid Red, not Rapid Red. It is yeah, Rapid Red. red. I was thinking <laughs> Grabber Red, but anyways, Rapid Red uh, Mach-E. Uh, how do you love your Mach-E? I love it. Oh, uh, you kind of set him up. Do you love it? How do you I love, it? love it? Do you love it? Yes. We know, we know he does. I love so. it so much that when I went to go buy it, the dealer just had all the paperwork all lined out. Do you like it? Do you love it? I said, I love it. He goes, sign here, 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 and here. And then it was like four hours and it was mine. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So it's not just mach -E's today though. Uh, and it's not just new EVs. We're going to go take a tour of what is out here. It, the event's called La Vida Volta. It's part of State of Charge. Hashtag evolved. Yeah. EV. I, we, we sort of uh, weren't sure if we were going to come to this event. We decided at the last minute there's enough cool stuff. Uh, and there's uh, another Mach-E out here. There's an, another electric Mustang. And I do say electric Mustang because it's an electric Mustang. Uh, for all of those people that go, a Mach-E is a Mustang? Well, this is the electric Mustang without the Mach-E. Let's go take a look. And this is a Mustang. Yeah. Let's go. Check this out. These are all EV conversions. And you can see right now, there's the 65 Mustang. That's an EV conversion. We have a VW, Porsche 912. And this one has a leaf engine or motor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't facing it, but she, she means this one. Yeah, this one is leaf powered. It's pretty cool. Plymouth uh, satellite. Tesla powered. Tesla powered. And here is the electric Mustang. This is powered by a Tesla motor. And this is the inverter up here. The Tesla motor is a little bit further back. And then it has a carbon fiber drive axle going back to a nine inch Ford rear end. Uh, they're still working on the conversion. Not only did they have to do the conversion, but they also had to restore the Mustang. So there's still more work to be done, but they're very, very close. And this is a super pretty, pretty red and a cool EV uh, powering it. I love this so much. This looks so good. Subaru Isn't this Brat. adorable? I've, back when I was a kid, I've ridden in the back of a few brats. Have you really? Yeah. I'll Does tell it you actually stories. look like that with the grabbies? Yeah, that's that's how they were. That is so awesome. So, what yeah. a classic. So yeah, it's basically rear facing seats. This is back in the day when you could do stuff like that. In the... What if we did stripes like these? No. No? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> But this is very cool. Also electric. Everything out here is electric, which is yeah, super cool. Yeah, it goes without saying. Look at the little Tesla logo. 62 Chevy Corvair. Which is your favorite out of all of these? I sort I of like this. This is so interesting. Oh, they have a YouTube channel if you guys want to check them out. YouTube. Unique Mobility. Yeah, Unique Mobility. 1982. Take a look in wow. here. And here's one little detail I like. Electric. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see that in the, the GoPro. First projection EV with regenerative braking. 1982. And look at that moonroof. And I love, like you want to talk about EV trucks here's here's a couple ev trucks oh my gosh it looks like it should be on the set of cars oh yeah <laughs> and this is by conductive classics electrifying the past look at that when you don't have Ooh, gas you get a lot of space up here that could be a big massive trunk yeah that would definitely be bigger than our trunk. and i like the headlights on this it looks like they've uh, put in some LED headlights as well. It's so cool, especially with the rusted stuff around it. And then I like how they have it labeled. 1958 Chevy slash Tesla. 
Chevesla. I looked at there's some t-shirts. Heavy. So custom electric hot rods. This is a uh, electric 51 speed shop, but you can Google them online. You can see some of the details in the back. And it's really, so cool. really, really low. Look at those wheels. And the 912, this is really cool. I love the fact that it's electric, but we got to talk about the interior. I am interested. The plaid interior, it's kind of cool. Yeah. So if you want a Tesla plaid, <laughs> Porsche you can plaid. have that or you can have a Porsche with plaid seats. <laughs> <laughs> And that's probably original or original design. It looks really I well kept. The, the seats are the original frame, but all the material is the Really? And was it like, Does did it they have a like plaid this? interior? In this era, they did offer some plaids and like hound style. Yeah. But this plaid wouldn't have been original to the horse. Gotcha. Okay. But. And an original duplication. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we have some more modern. EVs. That was and all we do the have non-driving EVs. Yeah, we have one up here. there. Um, looking cool. All right, out of spec moved their stuff over here. Of course, there's Zach from out of spec with his Ionic 5. If you guys watch the Race to Vegas, he, this is one of the ones. We won't spoil it. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch the Race to Vegas. <laughs> and one of Liv's favorite EVs, the it's i3. It's so cute. It's a little panda. And then we have a bunch of Teslas back here. Oh, no, they sort of thinned out. Yeah. Uh, but we, they were more full of Teslas. But we also have an F-150 Lightning. And an e-transit that actually carried a couple bikes. This is Nigel. Uh, you might have seen him in other videos. We've had, uh, he had the Poe Leaf. Yes. <laughs> the Leaf all tricked out with a police decoration. And if you're in the Denver area, this uh, Platinum Lightning is from Freeway Ford. I believe you can go take it for a test drive. Is this the ice blue? Ice blue, yeah. Metallic. And Looks then really we good. know the guy that owns this is Tim Jackson. He has it filled with ice in the front. And it you is. can see the water leaking out uh, from the front trunk drain. <laughs> And of course there's the e-transit and it's so cool seeing a lot of people really interested in the e-transit and, and then look at that color the porsche we're is that like there. We're, we're going to oh design. fine yeah. <laughs> so that this is an ev6 i love this uh blue and uh the guy that has the maki this is his wife's car so we're going to go around real quick and check out, out the of interior spec Dave. Oh no, it's uh, Tom, uh, no, it's Tim. Tim, yeah. yeah. I, so many I, I cars. I sort of have to say, I like the interior of the EV6. Pretty nice. I absolutely love the interior. And then we, of course, another Model S. We have a couple of bolts. And I want to check it out. There's a Jeep down here. Look how spacious this is. That's actually really spacious. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I was correct. I said I wanted to check out this uh, Jeep because I was wondering, like, is this the 4XE? So this is the plug-in hybrid Jeep. Looks like a normal Jeep, but you can uh, go a few miles on just the battery. And then, of course, Lucid is out here with one of their beautiful machines. They just opened up a, a shop here in Denver. And of course you've seen many of these, but uh, I think Liv is excited to go check out. The Porsche. And I think that's white and then chalk. And there was a gentleman who was hoping to see a Mach-E in space gray. So I feel like we can go give him a shout and have him come over and look, because this is really similar. I think so, yeah. It's like a titch more pigment. Very technical term, a titch. So these are really nice. Gosh, that looks beautiful. And they're both, oh wow, Illinois plates. Came a long way. So which color do you like now that you can see them side by side, the white or the gray? 
I like the gray, yeah, personally. It's me too. unique, it's different. Okay, I can introduce the car. It's a cool 65 Mustang, but I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. I, I just met Sean. Sean? Dan? Pat? Yeah, I can remember that name. I, I'm Patrick. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, I, as I mentioned, I talked to one of you guys when we first got here. I love the 65 Mustang, which is one of the reasons why we have a, a Mach-E. Is like, I came home from the hospital in a 65 Mustang. My mom and dad owned one from like 65 to right before I could drive, which pissed me off. I mean, <laughs> it irritated me, didn't it? But anyways, uh, this is, for me, one of the coolest cars out here. So tell us about this conversion um, and how you guys did it. Well, honestly, we, we started out, you know, because we wanted to build something that was going to bring us into the future, right? With muscle yeah. cars and we're just car, we're just car guys, right? And um, there's not a lot of electric cars out there, especially Mustangs that are high horsepower. And so we wanted something that wasn't a golf court, something that would be yeah. fun to drive and that would honor hot rodding and muscle cars. So that's why we built this. And this has, this is a combination. So this has a Tesla motor in it. Yeah. Um, but it's not like a normal Tesla with the motor driving the axle, the front axle. It's. You want to explain? Yeah. Yeah. So we, Tesla motors are transverse, and we wanted this motor to go in line like the original ICE engine, right? And so we tore apart a Tesla motor and inverter and put them together and realized that it wouldn't work that way. Or what we were doing was going to blow up. And we met a guy, Eddie. The, of Revolt Motors, and he had spent several years designing the Tesla inverter and motor to go inline. And in fact, last year he set the world land speed record for electric vehicles. Wow. With a, he had two of what we have one, he had two in his car. And so we, we bought one of his, we actually gave him ours and he reconfigured it for us after we found out that ours was kind of had problems. So we worked with him, he reconfigured it and sent it to us, and then we loaded it in the car. And then we have batteries, the Tesla batteries, so they match up to the, the motor. And so we have four in the front and 12 in the back, so 16 Tesla batteries, 350 volts, uh, 85 kilowatt hours. 85 kilowatt hours, that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. And then, so the, the inverter's up here, right? Yep. And then behind that is the Tesla motor Yep. mounted in not line. transversely, but inline. In line. And yep. then you have a, an, an axle going to a Ford. Uh, we, we have a, uh, a carbon fiber, uh, it's about four inches round, carbon fiber uh, drive shaft, and it connects to the rear end. Uh, Pat found a nine inch Ford truck rear end Yeah. because we wanted something heavier duty and got it cut down and put into the car. That's awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. So like my brother, like uh, he he inherited the 65 Mustang and he swapped out like the 289 engine with the 351. But this definitely tops that. <laughs> I, yeah, that's not your area. Well, bring him out. We'll race, see who's better. <laughs> uh, the, see that's, so he gave it to my other brother and then my other brother sold it. So he's what, just- Just tell me what color it is so I know what color to check the mirror for. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet this is quick. I mean, I'm like- I, I, so this motor is going to be just under 1,100 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. So a Tesla motor, you can't really equate to horsepower. horsepower. Yeah. But we're somewhere in the range of 500 horsepower. Nice. So that's at least quadruple the sad little six-cylinder that we pulled out of this <laughs> uh, after we got it back from the junkyard. So this started as a $2,500 junkyard car. Wow. And it's come to this. The body looks good. Now, uh, I, I, I have a feeling a lot of your time and effort was just restoring the body and getting it looking pretty. That's the problem. We talked about it yesterday. It's like we set out to convert a car to electric, make it cool. Yeah. Well, we're converting a car, but three quarters of our time was spent restoring, restoring. a car. <laughs> so we're almost done we're pretty much done with the restoration and we're really close to having the drivetrain spinning. So we're hoping the next week or two, we're going to be racing your brother with that 351. So, so are you guys local here in Colorado? 
We're in Arvada. In Arvada. So when you guys get that done, we, we're based out of Denver. Can we come take a look at it? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll do an even better video then when it's going up and down the streets and you, we'll find, we'll, we'll do a Mach-E GT versus this. Oh yeah. That'll be fun. All right. Uh, You're in. Yeah. We're in. That's going to be really embarrassing for one of us. I think I know who, but I'm yeah. not going to say. We'll you guys have to like make your bets yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys for sharing this with us. Like I said, uh, you know, the 65 Mustang, you know, you come home from the hospital one, it's in your family. It's like, I always love Mustangs, uh, which is why I love the, the styling cues of this SUV electric Mustang. But this still is just like the apple of my eye and it's candy apple red. This is kind of like what, <laughs> must, Ford, what Ford should have built. Well, yeah, <laughs> this, this would have been really cool. Have you guys seen the, the F100 that they, they did the conversion with? No. Oh yes. yeah, the yeah. eliminator. Yeah, the eliminator. yeah, we get to ride in it at in a New York auto show. It's it's fantastic, and they took a basically a Mach-E powertrain. They took the Mach-E motors and put in that. So, um, I, I'd like to get one of those Mach-E motors. They're selling those as a crate package. Yeah, that you can do conversions with. I, I haven't seen anybody do one yet. No. but they sold out of them almost instantly. That's what I so. that's what I heard, and it, and it's relatively reasonable. It's like forty two hundred dollars, forty five hundred. I can't remember, but you still um, need a few more parts and pieces to make. Yeah, it all work. and and a little thing <laughs> called a battery, but and they're 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 half the torque of what we have. Half the torque. So you need two of them I like to do that. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> One front, one rear, yeah. make it all wheel drive at the yeah, same that's time. What you'd have to do, yeah, add money. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Um, this is super cool to see, and we look forward to seeing it on the road, too. Yeah, thank you. All right, Appreciate thanks. You okay, so we've been trying to do a thing between Mustang owners. Like, what can we do to celebrate having mutual Mustangs? And you now have the first My Little Pony sticker. My Little Pony. I like your pony. And he's actually going to put it on his car right now. How cool is this? <gasps> Oh, it's the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. I love that you picked that one too. That's amazing. Thank you. Sweet. Uh, now we're an electric pony. You're an electric pony. Oh, you literally are. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you so much. For everyone that wanted a Ford Galax E instead of the Mach-E, here it is. <laughs> hey, what's up? So you're Stormy? Yes, ma'am. Nice to meet you. And Wrenchology is your company, your YouTube channel? Yep, I started Wrenchology in 2017, kind of trying to show women that, hey, you can work on cars too. I make repair content, so that way, you know, help the DIYers out. And then they kind of led, after my husband built his conversion, it led into us learning the electrification process. And now that's kind of what we focus on. That is absolutely awesome. Well, we will put your YouTube channel down below. And you worked on this week car. Yes, he did the electrification process, but I did read uh, plumb all the brakes so very nice it looks absolutely beautiful did Thanks you so drive it here from california we trailered it we you trail it okay we cool drive it all around los angeles we get around 100 miles of electric range so when we hit traffic it even gets better which in la that's Whoa. perfect that is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal well we might be in the area so maybe we will see you again soon feel, feel free to shop, <laughs> stop by our shop oh my gosh oh awesome i would love that well thank you so much it was nice to meet you Thanks for stopping by. So this is like one, like there's a lot of cool cars. Of course, I'm sort of partial to the, the Mustang, <laughs> it's but I, fun. I was just telling our friend Joel, like, I think this would be a fantastic car to have here in Colorado, just drive around in the mountains, not like killing it, but just cruising around. Yeah, there, it's fun to drive and it is so, well, it's really fast. So you, yeah. you're tempted to get just like yours, right? You, it's hard to keep your foot out of it. Yeah. Uh, I, I get in it and all of a sudden I'm overheating the battery and it's trying to shut down because you just want to go. It goes fast and it handles really well. Yeah, I bet so. I mean, the 912s always handle well, but now it's like you have the weight to it. Well, we the changed the weight distribution. It's more like 53% in the front now. Okay and 47 in the back. That's a pretty good balance. Until you sit in it. Of course, then when it, people are in it, you get more weight bias in the rear. Okay. But it handles nice. Steering's better. Yeah. Because these cars imagine. were so light that when you first hit a bump, the wheel goes like that. Yeah. But not anymore. Now it's more like driving your car, you know. And when you're without the the weight up there and you're on it in a curve you yeah. don't you don't have the the weight in the right. steering but now you pushes. do this thing now it just grabs and 
you sort of can steer it with the rear end. It'll spin the tires when you're going around a corner, kind of drift it. That's so cool. Yeah. So how long did this project take? Okay. Well, the actual conversion's fast. Mm -hmm. That just took a few weeks oh, yeah, and part time. Yeah. We have, we've been doing restoration for 30 years. So we have like 30 to 40 projects in our shop at any given time where people are paying us to work on their cars. Yeah. This is our project, so it's at the very end of the line. Uh, yeah, so it priorities. Really took us a couple of years. The restoration is what took the time. Yeah. Because we bought this in really rough condition and then rebuilt it completely. We, I believe the people in the, the Mustang and some of the others, Kinda they've said, the it's like thing. the restoration is the hardest yeah. and, and costly part too. Uh, even I tell the people parties. if they're gonna do this, buy a perfect car, just okay. go spend 60 grand or 80 grand and buy a perfect 912 yeah and then convert it keep the motor or sell it to recoup some money and you'll be doing it at half the cost as if you restore it now do people contract with you to just like if they wanted to come and say like i i have the perfect whatever yeah uh and hand it over to you guys and you guys handle then the we'll conversion convert it that's awesome them. yeah that's kind of what we're trying to get into very cool so, i it, and it's I've actually, with our YouTube channel, like on Twitter and stuff, like I actually just had somebody the other day going, they have a conversion that they want to do and they're here in Colorado. Um, and I think they listed you guys that they had considered, but they were they were trying to find a, as many Colorado people as they could. Yeah, there's some um, shops around that are doing it, you know, some people around that are getting into the space, which is very good. You know? Now, as a Mach-E fan, um, we get to ride in the F100 that Ford converted using the basically the crate motor out of the GT. Oh, really? Have you seen those crate motors? Have you looked at those? I have seen them. Yeah, and I I was trying to see if I could buy one. It doesn't appear you can get one yet. The, apparently, uh, don't take my word for it. They do go on uh, Ford Performance, and I believe it's like forty five hundred dollars just for the basically like a crate EV motor. Right. But they go out like they they have it for a day and then they're they're gone. But that would be cool. Like I would love that. I mean, that has a Tesla, right. the, the 65 Mustang. It'd be sort of cool to have a, a Ford motor in that. But. I had somebody with a Mustang contact me and that's exactly what they wanted to do. They uh, wanted to buy the Ford crate motor and put it in and do the whole thing. But I got on the site and it just didn't look like whatever we did, we couldn't get one. Yeah. Now that was, you know, three months ago. So maybe okay. things are changing. GM is coming out with one too. Uh, my, they've had it at SEMA a couple of times, and I'm on a list for that one. My nephew does uh, performance tuning on Corvettes and Camaros and whatnot. I should see if he's interested, because he, he has a lot of old, nice, classic cars uh, that are coming in in his shop. I bet he's, hmm. of course, it's a completely different direction for him, but this is really cool. I, we, we noticed the, uh, the plaid seats in the here. The tartan plaid. Yeah. Yeah, this was some German material that we got a hold of. And, uh, and it's not an exact replica, but it's sort of a throwback to something yeah. that you would see in a some of the 60s. Early cars had colors similar to that. This seat came from a guy that specializes in Porsche interiors. Yeah. So it is a color that they use quite a bit in these older conversions that they do. And then the leather we had left over from a Ferrari project we did. So nice. We had just enough to do the outside of the seats. It looks great inside and out. And I, yeah, I can imagine you're going to be a very popular guy. <laughs> well, once we get it, we're going to take it to SEMA. And there, oh, nice. we just were talking to those guys. They have sort of an electric display that they had last year. Mm -hmm. Just kind of out in the open, but they had a bunch of different cars. So we're going to take it out and show it there, and it's going to go to fully charged out in uh, San Diego in we'll, September. We'll be there. Yeah. yeah, that'll be fun. That should be really exciting. Uh, we'll look for you there. And we went to the fully charged in Austin that they yeah. had in 2019. Did you go to that one? No, this is, this will be our first fully charged. Wow. So we, we we started our YouTube channel when we um, put in the order for the Mach-E. Oh, so it was like nice. July 2020. Um, but all of this stuff, it's like, once you get into it, it's, it's like addictive it's addicting. and we, it's such cool technology. We went to fully charged just kind of because we were interested in doing this. And, uh, at that time we put in an order for a Rivian cause Rivian was there. Yeah. That was three years ago. And the truck finally came in. Like we've just got it a couple nice. weeks ago. And, um, 
we're just enjoying the whole electric thing so much. It's yeah. just such a whole different, you know, yeah. different mode of transport sort of. So, and you've been traditional ICE engines. So like you're excited by the EV stuff. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a lot of resistance to it, but I find that- Some people hate that we did this to this car. They get real jacked up about it. <laughs> well, drive around in a Mach-E for a day. Yeah. You'll, get, you'll get a couple of like- That's, that's not a Mustang. Yeah. What are you people thinking? I know. I You know what got me jazzed on it is in 2013, I leased a Chevy Volt. Yeah. And I had it for two years and just fell in love with it. I fell yeah. in love with the whole electric because I have a house up in the mountains just west of Conifer. Mm -hmm. So driving up the hill, I mean, I could pass anybody going up that yeah. hill. And I start going, wow, these cars just drive so much better than a gas yeah. car in the mountains. And then I gave it back and I was just sorry I ever let it go because I loved that damn car. And it was dead reliable. It was n never went to the dealership, nothing ever wrong with it. That's and, awesome. Uh, so then we started thinking about this and decided we were gonna you know, go this route. We were going to do a Tesla drivetrain. Right. And uh, we were working with another company out in California, but they were having some issues with the controller. And so we ended up getting with Electric GT, and they've been really good to work with. So. Very cool. We're gonna, so it's not a Tesla drivetrain, it's Electric yeah, GT? Yeah, this is a Electric GT, so it's basically a net gain motor. Okay. And it's very simple. It's 120 horsepower. It's got about 180 foot-pounds of torque. It's equivalent to 200 horsepower in a gas motor. Right. Which in a car like this, I have a customer that has a 911. Mm -hmm. uh, he took the engine out, sent it to some specialists, spent $60,000, and they turned it into 180 horsepower. So it might go as fast as this, but probably not. Probably not. That's really cool. It'll go longer. But... Yeah, that's that's the only advantage. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. This has been great. Um, Good to talk to you. I'll look for you uh, out of fully charged. Yeah, we'll, we'll find you again you out there. You guys will be out there. And... We're excited to... We're going to drive the, the Mach-E out there nice. and make a vlog about how easy it is really to do road trips nowadays. So um, you've been road tripping with that a little bit? Well, so we had a first edition and we did road trips. We actually went to San Diego last year and that. We just traded that in and got the GT, so we, we've had it for uh, about three weeks now. Um, and it's it's sort of like night and day. I mean, it's a lot more powerful. The, uh, the first edition suspension was like an SUV suspension. This is way sportier, sportier it has a Magna Rye suspension. So uh, it handles like 10 times better, so. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. And then- I love the color of it. Very cool. Dates back to uh, 69 Mustang. Right. We Forever restored Blue. a 69 Boss 302 that was that color, you know, pretty. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of, we do about half American cars and half high-end European stuff. So we we get in various Mustangs. We just finished a 64 and a half, uh, very wow. early V8, black, white interior that the people over in Cherry Creek bought brand new. Mm -hmm. It's been in the family since wow. brand new. And we just finished it and returned it to them. And it's a really beautiful old car. And now we're doing a 66 convertible for a guy that nice. his dad bought it new and they've kept it in the family. So. We had a 65 Mustang uh, that my mom and dad bought new in 65. I came oh. home from the hospital in, in a Mustang. <laughs> um, and they kept it for years. They gave it to one brother, then gave it to another brother. He sold it out of the family, oh, nice. uh, probably like 86 or so. Uh, my mom, I think, threatened to disown him. She's probably going to dis yeah, yeah. say <laughs> cut off, out of the will. But, but yeah. So thanks again. We, yeah. we really well, appreciate thank this. Thank you. The icebreaker. How cool is this thing? Wow. That looks extremely powerful, like a Mad Max kind of thing. Yeah, it's a it's a 1970 Rocon Trailbreaker. Um, Whoa! It's a two wheel drive motorbike from the 70s, and so like power goes in, and then both of the wheels are driven. We've got a chain on this side, and uh, yeah, we it was sitting around. My grandfather had it, didn't really know what to do with it, needed a new engine, and we needed a new project, and so <laughs> like, hey. Let's take it and put an electric motor on it. That is awesome. Uh, last year we, yeah, got a motor, 
controller battery hooked it all up got it running real nice and yeah it's so much fun to use yeah. oh my gosh it looks super fun i feel like you need a costume when you drive it though oh right yeah. gotta gotta get like post-apocalyptic something oh absolutely yeah okay it's but wait, you guys said you needed a new project, so do you do this? We've been, we're just getting into it. This is our uh, second second conversion we ever did. The first one was a, uh, a little Coleman mini bike, maybe, maybe like yay tall, yay long, like basically a kid's bike, but uh, but yeah, we just decided we'd been getting into EVs and we were like, hey, maybe we can try this. And so we tried it on the first one, learned a little bit, and wanted to do something bigger and, and now so, you have this yeah, definitely now we, bigger now we got this one which is decent amount bigger like last one couldn't really go up very many hills this one could probably climb a tree this yeah. it's yeah. ridiculous it goes up to 45 miles per hour can handle steep grades like 60 percent grades it's that's awesome it's i want to see this literally crushing ice though like i yeah. feel like it would just oh, like yeah. plow through stuff oh yeah i mean we should take it to a frozen lake there. right oh honestly i mean oh. the frozen lake runs in like yeah ne netherland or whatever or oh yeah um but yeah, that would be really fun. And you have a Model 3 performance. Uh, yeah, I had one. It's uh, it's since met its demise. But Aww. Yeah. And now you ride this? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I take this on the highway. <laughs> oh, this, this thing's fun. I wouldn't trust it at, the, at 70 miles per hour. It's almost though. street legal. Oh. Signals. Hey. And someone to, uh, someone to register. Oh, geez. Good luck. But no, it's, it's great. And, Weekends we take it out onto trails and have driven it around, and it, it's so much fun. Super quick, can go anywhere. Um, can you can run it for about like two or three hours of uh, of driving it around. So nice. It's it's great. We we absolutely love how it turned out. Well, thank you so much for introducing me to Icebreaker. And what are your names? <laughs> uh, I'm Hunter. Hunter. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you both. I'm Liv. Nice to meet you too. Hi. So how do you feel about this I car? Was, I would have gotten a different color personally. <gasps> Are you because, serious? This is the exact same color as y'all's old one, but that's your brand. You got to stick with it. You know? Well, and he looks really bad in orange, and so that'd be the other like color. The Brimbos on the front look sexy. <laughs> they, yeah, they do. <laughs> Wait, what color would you choose? Uh, I'm a white guy. Like really? Yeah. That's Jack. Like get out of here. It's too boring. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wait, your car is gray though. I know. What are you doing? I didn't have a choice. It was all the dealer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fair. Fine. <laughs> I love Fine. it. I think it's great. Thank you. We yeah. like it. Yeah. Now you just got to push that range further. Ugh, another, another race. Another race. Yeah. yeah. It's on. The legal cannonball. <sighs> hi Nigel, you're in the video. Well, hi there. Well, hi there. What did you bring today? Um, two things actually. This Mustang, well, three. Ooh. This Mustang over here, which is a Colorado Auto Dealers Association car. Uh, this super, super cool van. I love vans. Yeah. From uh, Phil Long Ford. Uh, it's not too much of a plug for people. <laughs> and um, an electric bike over there. Right over there nice. Yeah. I feel like uh, XL energy. energy. No, I don't know that. Oh, right. That's yours? This, yeah, the little oh, blue one. Yeah. Wow. Good job. So you yeah, stacked that uh, bike in there? I chucked it in the back of there. Nice. And, um, this is totally fits now. It's a sweet van. This is what we need more of, these vans, because where's all our journey person vans? You know, like electricians, plumbers, everything. Um, we don't have enough of them out there, so good on you, Ford, and good on uh, the e lightning truck is here as well. Oh, yeah, it is. Well, and vans like this, like for journey people or uh, whatever we'll call them, making short trips, like yes, going exactly. 20 miles here or there, like exactly. they don't need this long range necessarily. How far is your are your vehicles actually going in a day? Yeah, They're doing 100 miles. This has got way more than 100 miles in it, and it's so comfortable. And it actually, uh, the AC was so cold it was almost snowing in there. Okay, we better hop in there soon though, because it's kind of toasty today. <laughs> it's toasty, that's for sure. So, Thanks, yeah, Nigel. Lovely. Thanks for bringing all these. Lovely to see you. Likewise. Yeah, this was such a cool event. I'm glad we got to talk to a couple of the EV build owners. If you are interested in more information, if you check down below in the description, I have links to some of the people featured in this video. And also drop a note, which of these conversions was your favorite? 
Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I do want to thank you and, of course, thank our patrons for supporting this video, our unbridled, our engaged, and our whisper patrons. And just remember, no matter what you drive, even if it isn't a retro EV conversion, enjoy the ride. Bye.